So good afternoon. This is the internship showcase for the College of Science, Technology, and Health. My name is Whitney Duchesne, and I'm the career liaison in the Career and Employment Hub. Now we'll have the students introduce themselves, their name, their major, and where they did their internship. Um, hi, everyone. I am Montana Kalian. I did my, well, I'm a social and behavioral sciences major. Um, I'm doing, currently doing my internship with a software company here in Portland called Cloud Immersive. Um, but I'm doing an HR recruiting internship, not a software internship. Hi, I'm Michelle Karam. I'm a human biology major here, and I did do a year-long internship at Maine Medical Center Research Institute, which is now Maine Health Institute for Research, um, and I'm currently a student employee there. Uh, my name is Jackson Reed Elwell. I'm a fourth-year electrical engineering student. I did my internship uh, this past spring and summer at the NASA Langley Research Center down in Hampton, Virginia. I'm Connor Mayhew. I'm a senior IT student. I did my internship at SAPI. Great. Thanks so much. Um, so I've got some questions that I would ask all four of you to answer. And then, you know, hopefully we've got an audience and we might have some time for questions after from uh, students as well. So. How did your internship relate to your major or program? Um, well, I started in the social and behavioral sciences program because I was interested in public health. So I was originally looking for public health internships and then my interest meandered into HR. So I was looking for public health HR internships, like maybe in a hospital or something. Um, but in order to find an internship, I applied to multiple different ones. Um, and so the one I ended up really becoming interested in was this small internship with the software company. So it doesn't really relate very specifically <laughs> at all. It's this nice meandering circle of how I ended up here. Um, but a lot of the psychology and sociology information that I'm learning in my program relates in a circuitous way to the human interaction elements that I have as a recruiter. Perfect. <laughs> um, so I work in a research lab. I'm currently a student and I'm hoping to go to medical school. So it is different, but still in the sciences. The reason I started looking for research experience is because one, medical school is very competitive, so I need all that extra experience. And also, I don't necessarily know that that is exactly what I want to go into until I am in it. So I wanted to look at all my other options. So Dr. Dave Champlin, who's a professor here, actually really assisted me in getting an internship at MMCRI, which was fantastic. And he helped me go through different labs and see which one I thought would be a great fit in. I definitely want to look at one that seemed to have a bit more clinical relations, um, just because I do have that medical school um, on my horizon. So I ended up being in a lab that studies multiple myeloma, which is a cancer. So we uh, look at, we do a bunch of cancer studies all the time, looking for different treatments. And we also have data coming in from the hospital and get to work with some bone marrow from patients since it's a blood cancer that grows in bone. So I think it's really cool and um, definitely has opened my view to different aspects of science. So I uh, found the, so the federal government, they have something called the Pathways Program and it's for different government organizations. And what they'll do is they'll pay you to work at uh, you know, whatever government organization you, you applied for, uh, the application opens in the fall and the uh, NASA organization has their own uh, pathways department. And what they do is they, you, you apply to the program and you specify what your major is and they uh, give you a resume to the different NASA departments that are interested in a pathways intern and they review your resume and reach out to you if they're interested in your application. Uh, my department, which was the electromagnetics and sensors branch, was specifically looking for an electrical engineer uh, to do their pathways rotation that spring and summer. Uh, luckily, uh, that was, you know, related to my <laughs> major. Um, I just knew I wanted to do something technical, and my major is kind of like a broad umbrella term. A lot of internships would fall into it. Um, 
Uh, I specifically worked in the help desk. Um, so if something broke, I'd have to fix it. Um, so I heard that in my freshman year that working in a help desk is a good way to get started in the industry because it gives you a lot of uh, good experience. So that's also what I wanted to do. So. Thank you. Can you all talk about the process of finding your internship? It sounds like all of you had sort of different approaches, whether it was faculty or maybe job boards, or how did you come across these options? I applied for all of the internships I applied for from the USM Job and Internship Board. Um, there are a few companies that I got in touch with to see if they were offering internships for the what was I doing it for this um, summer semester? Um, but all of them I applied for through the job board, um, which I had known about for a while and had been keeping tabs on. And so like wanted to find when the employers were going to be posting their opportunities and if it would line up with my timeline for finding the internship for the course that I had to take it for. So there was a lot of, it was a, it was a, tenuous like timeline trying to find the right internship for the start of the course and be able to marry those um yeah so i'm a fourth year now um but way back during my freshman year at the very end of my spring semester i started hearing about internships at mmcri and i was super interested and wanted to apply but at the time i was 18 years old and had no idea that you actually had to apply way earlier to get a summer internship. So I had reached out to who I just mentioned before, Dave Champlin, and he let me know that the internship deadlines had closed and I should just keep an eye out next year. So the following year came along and I couldn't find any applications open for that. So I started looking into a bunch of different research positions I could apply for over the summer. And I was looking around early spring, late winter, and I had to get faculty advisor, um, had to have a faculty advisor. So I reached back out to Dave Champlin. And at the time he said that the MMCRI application wasn't open because everyone from the previous summer had gone bumped because of COVID. So he said, because he actually knew people, he was going to help me like reach out to some of them. So he had me write up a cover letter and have my resume sent over to him. And he really helped me get in touch with all of them. And he said that since it's a competitive summer program, it would actually look really good if I was willing to do the summer plus the academic year because they teach people a bunch of stuff and then everyone leaves for the school year. So it's kind of like they invested time and then people have to leave again. So I was super excited for that in general. So I did that and I was able to secure a spot at the lab I'm still in, so yeah. So I heard about the Pathways program through a professor I was taking a class with. Uh, I was taking an engineering elective with him, and he had a the director of the Goddard Center, God, NASA Goddard Center, do a, a presentation during one of our classes, which was a really cool experience. And he had told us about the Pathways program and, and encouraged us to apply. Um, so so that's that's how I found it out. I I also was encouraged by uh, my professor, who I was a research assistant for, um, we had we had done two conference publications together, and she believed that I'd be a strong applicant for for receiving an interview. But they they do the Pathways program uh, uh, applications uh, every fall. I believe it ends uh, late October. Um, I had no idea what I was doing with the internship process, so. I ended up getting um, Stacy from the career hub to help me out. And then um, I went through the job board and applied to different internships there. And then the one with Sappy ended up being the last one I applied to. Um, so it worked, worked out. So. Thank you. It sounds like most of these were summer internships. Yeah. Perfect. Summer-ish. Yes. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about the timing of the applications for something like a summer internship? You mentioned yeah. it was not what you expected. <laughs> no. When did you um, start? How long did it take? Yeah. 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 I plan and worry ahead way in advance. Um, so I was taking 
the SBS program internship class in the summer, this past summer. Um, so in February, I started looking at what organizations I might want to do my internship with. Um, and then I think in March, I was applying four positions. Some didn't open, the application process didn't open up until like late March. And in my body, that feels like not soon enough when the class is supposed to start at the begin in the beginning of May. Um, so I was applying for positions from like beginning, middle of March, all the way through probably um, beginning of April. And then like um, Connor just said, the last position I applied for, what's the one that actually ended up working out? Um, but I was still, they brought me on board about a month before I actually needed to start. And then I started the internship about a week before the class started. So everything was in place. Um, and it was not a very stressful time once everything was in place, but leading up to that, it was like, it's like white knuckling, deep breathing, trying to, <laughs> trying to figure everything out. Um, but it was a quick, a pretty quick process once I applied and they got back to me the next day and we had an interview the following week. They had me do an assignment um, and then we did a second interview and um, the offer call was the next day. So it was probably about a two week, two and a half week process once they actually received my application and everything got underway. Um, for me, when I applied, I believe I started my application process in February and then, so really early considering I started in June. And then I had an interview with them and they were pretty much able to offer me the spot as an intern over the Zoom interview but they confirmed it in an email about a week later. From what I've seen around different labs in the building, it seems like most of the time they either will be able to offer you the spot right in on the interview um, if they think it's a good fit or they get back to people within about a week. So that was great. I think the thing that took the most time was um, at the end of April, they sent me out a list of all the vaccinations I had to be up to date for and have sent into them. And that took a really, really long time because I was dealing with pharmacists and my old pediatrician and all of that stuff, trying to get people to send in things and it kept getting lost. So that took about three weeks in itself. So that was probably the most difficult part of it, um, of a getting to start. But once I did, it was all smooth from there on out. Yeah, so I, I had applied to the Pathways program uh, mid-October. Uh, it took a few weeks for them to get back to me with the, the interview times that I was scheduled for. I, I met with a few different departments at uh, different centers. I received my offer letter a few weeks after that. So I, I believe it was about halfway through November. And in my offer letter, they, I also had to go through a, a security clearance sort of, sort of background checks. And, and that took a bit of time to, to get the results from that back. Um, I was also required to find an apartment uh, by my start date. I was starting on January 14th and that didn't leave me a ton of time to <laughs> buy an apartment. Uh, and never having rented an apartment before, it was, uh, it, it was a little strenuous, you know, uh, but luckily I'd found one and the, I had moved down uh, in the beginning of January and I, it, it was also weird because of COVID, how how all that worked. I wasn't I, I wasn't allowed to go on center until I had gotten uh, fingerprints and an ID and all that. But my all my meetings were on Teams on like a secure server that I needed a laptop for that I couldn't get because I wasn't allowed on center yet. So uh, there were some difficulties at first, but my supervisor was a big help in helping me get all that coordinated. Um, and after you know, all that was figured out. It was, it was pretty smooth sailing. Um, I applied in mid March and then I had one interview. Um, and then I got the offer in April. And then after that, I had to, um, get them some documents. I also had to take a, a physical exam and then also take a, a drug test. Um, and then, and that was it, the whole process. 
interesting lots of steps after the offer that were not expected, <laughs> no. right? Vaccinations, housing, physicals, so, you know, onboarding yeah. process, all of those things add time to when you can start your internship. So, you know, even though it might happen in the summer and the class starts at the beginning of May, all of the lead up with all of these other things that are going to pop up are going to require you to start much, much earlier than, than probably expected. Um, what was the, your favorite part of your, of your internship? What was the best part of the experience? Um, well, it's still ongoing. So I guess one of the best parts is that it wasn't just a quick two and a half month, three month internship. And then all the experience just sat there and I didn't get to build on it. Um, I'm still building on it. It's, this will probably become a full-time position. So it'll, it's really a growth process. Um, and the way that Cloud Immersive does internships is the interns are very hands-on, very much, this is your role within the company, not just stuck at a desk somewhere and we don't really quite know what to do with you. So we'll just, we'll check in every once in a while and see how things are going. Um, I can see the direct impact that I have on a day-to-day -day basis and I can see my contributions to the team and feedback from the team. And that's really satisfying. It's it's much more satisfying than I thought it would be because I'm playing such an integral role to the team. I think I'm still working at MMCRI at the moment. I think it is called MHIR now, but I just prefer to say MMCRI. It's a recent <laughs> name change and I don't like saying mer. Um, so I'm still working there, but going back to when I started, I think some of my favorite things was when I started to become independent because it was a gradual thing that I didn't even really notice. And then suddenly I'd be doing experiments by myself that spanned a couple of days time. And I would just know how to do everything. And I'd also know how to start troubleshooting it. So I'd go to my mentor, not with a bunch of small questions, but I'd be able to go up and ask her questions if my troubleshooting methods were making sense. Um, and that was really cool to just start getting that independence because it did happen a lot quicker than I would have thought, you know, for doing experiments or I'm working with cells and dishes or um, where this lab I'm in actually works with mice. So I could handle mice independently and know how to treat them ethically. And I think that was just a really cool realization that happened about three months into my internship. So, uh, there were a lot of things I, I really enjoyed about my internship. One, I lived in a new place I'd never been. And so that was an experience in itself, exploring this new area around me. I, I had a great supervisor as well. Um, well, uh, to give some context, the, the project I was working on at the time was uh, with a team of atmospheric scientists, and they wanted to receive certain communication signals from a, a, a group of privately owned satellites. And so I was on a team of engineers that worked with these atmospheric scientists to develop a ground station for uh, doing signal processing and, and receiving these transmitted signals. And a really, it, it was really cool being on a, on a team and, and going through the design process. You know, uh, working with people who aren't engineers, they have an idea of their project specifications and what their requirements are. And, you know, being an engineer and, and going over with what's feasible and what we can actually do versus, you know, uh, what you want the requirements to be. You know, there, there was a lot of back and forth and, and learning how to communicate with uh, technically to people who don't share the same discipline uh, was a, a really interesting experience for me. Um, I enjoyed working with the team that I was um, a part of, but then also gradually becoming more independent and then being able to um, fix things on my own with, without asking a lot of questions, which is why I always um, did to my teammates. Hopefully I didn't annoy them with that, but um, yeah, it was just, you know, eventually becoming more independent. Um, it gives you the feeling that you are, you know, you do belong in this field and it um, helps reinforce that. Did you have any challenges in your internship and how did you approach them? Yeah, I mean, personally, since the since it doesn't relate at all to my degree, I have no 
real educational foundation for what I'm doing. So it's all learning on the fly. And I do a lot of research on a day-to-day -day basis to give myself a background. Um, <clears throat> and then in the world at large, the job market is really difficult. And so it's really difficult to recruit people to come into the organization. Um, and we're such a small company that we don't, we don't have like an established talent pipeline. We don't have really established relationships yet because we are relatively new to Maine. So there's not a lot of resources in place to pull from. I'm the one putting those resources in place. Um, so it's a huge learning curve as well as recruiting for employment in the current job market. So it, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge period, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> but it's rewarding all the same still. I've had a couple of challenges with mine. I think I've done plenty of science classes from all of my education, but going into a line of research where there aren't actual answers is a very different mindset because you go in and when something doesn't go wrong, there's no one there to say, oh, I know what it was. People can only go, let's try and figure something out and redo it. So it can take a long time. I know there have been times that I've done a couple months of research and then we realized something was going wrong, maybe not on my end, but just with how stuff is working. And so we have to start troubleshooting months of research. And this has happened for many people throughout the lab. I think it just really changes your mindset to start looking at what, who, like, what is failure? It's like, that's not failure on your end. It's just the way science is. And I think that applies to a lot of people's different work. Um, and I also know the things I'm working with are really expensive and that can be kind of nerve wracking, especially for someone coming in and thinking, wow, I'm using this small vial and it's worth $400. It's really pricey <laughs> and mistakes still happen because we're all people. And it doesn't just happen to me, it happens to other people. And it's really nerve wracking um, to go forward and especially to even own up to a mistake where you go, I did this in the wrong order or I did something here, but it happens. I know um, one of the smaller mistakes I made that was just based off communication where I was transferring something off to someone else and we didn't have it written down. I had said it and it was a verbal confirmation and it got messed up. I know I was super nervous about it, but when my boss asked me about it, I was like, I'm so sorry, this is my part in it. And yeah, it, this happened. And the very next day, she actually sent me an email saying, I appreciate your honesty so much. I'd like you to stay here for another year, um, which is not what I would have thought. But so it's definitely worth owning up to your mistakes and remembering that every single person you've ever met has made mistakes. And it's just being able to acknowledge it and move on with it and try not to do it again. So, yeah. One of the biggest challenges for me was the project I was working on. I hadn't gone over in my coursework very much. It, it related to some upper level courses I hadn't taken yet. And so I spent a lot of time studying. <laughs> uh, I thought I could get away for, from school for a semester and I couldn't. Uh, <laughs> and so there, I, I spent a great amount of time uh, learning you know, my, my supervisor had a, a ton of textbooks, like they, they had like a little library in, in the department I was working for. And I spent a lot of time there um, asking him questions, you know, bouncing ideas and information off one another. And, and uh, he, he was, I was very lucky to have a supervisor that would allow me to, to do that, to, to try to learn. And, and he, he tried to point me in the best direction he could. Um, but, but that was a big challenge was, was learning technical information. And the other ones I, I'd mentioned before, um, I was working with with people who weren't engineers and learning how to communicate engineering topics to people who aren't engineers. And at first, it may seem obvious to me what I'm saying, but you know, if you don't have the same jargon or nomenclature, it can be very difficult at times to communicate what you mean to say. Um, I think communication is also something I challenge with because I'd have people that were either angry calling me because something broke, or they would get angry at me because I couldn't fix it immediately. Um, so it's sometimes it felt like I was a therapist. I have to calm people down, um, you know, or sometimes there'd be um, like time sensitive issues. Like if this doesn't get fixed, then production is going to go down. So it's, you know, nerve wracking because it's like, well, you got to you do it or something like that. And it's like, how did I 
get stuck with this. I'm just the intern, but you know, you have to roll with it basically. So awesome. awesome. Um, any words of advice for other students looking for their first internship? Um, apply for lots of positions, and even if you don't think it really aligns with what you want to do or what kind of company you might want to work for, apply and learn about it. Um, I am not a tech person <laughs> at all. I want nothing to do with technology, and I'm pretty good about keeping technology way at bay <laughs> in my life. And yet, I'm working for a very leading edge software development company which I don't understand what they're saying. And I've learned a lot more about the computer software world than I ever thought I would want to know. Um, but it's fascinating. And it gives me this whole other view into the world that I never would have ever had if I had, if I had stayed, you know, done an HR internship somewhere that I already knew about or was already interested in. It's a whole different level of experience. I'd say ask all the people for help. Everyone wants to help you and everyone has different perspectives and so much information they can give you. I know just from, from my perspective, now that I've learned certain things, all I wanna do is hear someone else say something and go, oh, do this, it'll help you so much. I already troubleshooted it, don't, don't do what I did. And I know that's what so many of my mentors have helped me with and cut me so many steps that I probably will have gone through myself. So just ask and, I think it's also a relief to remember that if you're in a new career or changing careers and going into something, everyone knows you're at the base, the base level. No one expects you to be up here yet. And so everyone is really willing to help you and go the extra mile. And so it's just worth it. Just ask for the help. Uh, definitely utilize the career and employment hub. I've been uh, working on my resume and, and interview skills with uh, Stacy Stewart over there for four years now and she's <laughs> she's helped me a lot um i uh, that that's definitely something that helped me a lot in, in getting my internship the other thing is is something that that was previously mentioned is not worrying so much if you don't know everything when you get there you know if you're an, an engineer intern you're not a full-time engineer you're not being paid like a full-time engineer and you're not expected to know things like a full-time engineer um, and that was something I, I sort of struggled with was uh, I, I'd mentioned before that I'd spent a lot of time studying material that I wasn't familiar with and I kind of felt bad that I didn't already know that you know I, I sort of expected oh well you know you're in this position you're working on this project you should already be familiar with these things and so that that was a bit of a transition uh, for me and you know never uh, always make sure you ask questions that's that's another one <laughs> um, I'd say start your process now because things will go wrong and it it takes a lot more time than expected to actually get an internship um, and also um, you don't have to know everything because um, you're gonna they're gonna they obviously want you to succeed so they're gonna teach you everything that you need to know um, like I'd have to fix things I'd never heard of before so like show me or I have to you know uh, look up the answer basically or something like that in order to fix it but yeah fantastic thank you all so much um we've got a little bit of time does anyone have any questions? For the panelists? Yeah. Um, so I know that it was just mentioning that it's okay to not have an excessive amount of knowledge based on the internship. Now, my biggest problem, and I feel like I kind of beat myself up about is I'm still taking certain courses. And I'm a little, like, I still need to understand the concept, which discourages me a lot when I go into looking for internships because I'm like, well, people, you know, their requirements require this, but I don't have that knowledge, but I know the type of person I am, I can pick up on things as a hands-on person. So what would you guys know, like perspective be at, at just going for it, although you know that you don't have that knowledge? Um, I'd say, I don't know what your major is, but most likely whatever internship you're going to start in, they're going to, your expectation, what they're going to expect of you is going to be way overshot. I know when I started mine, I've been doing different science labs for years at that point, And they were still like, do you know how to pipette? 
I was like, this is great because I should, but realistically I've been in science labs where there's one old pipette that goes around the entire class. So I've done it about <laughs> 10 times <laughs> and that's where they start you off. And of course now, if I was like, I don't know how pipette, they'd be like, hmm, well, you've been doing it with us for a year now, <laughs> but it's so different. And they're going to expect that you've just had science or like um, college education level classes and you really don't start learning until you're in the workforce. And that's totally okay. So I think no matter what, you're you're gonna overshoot it and it's gonna be a great relief when you start. So just go for it. Did anybody else have any other questions? No? I guess I, yeah. I guess I'm uh, right now like really trying to like push through this because I'm supposed to be graduating with my bachelor's next September. And like, I'm trying to push through and like, it's rough a little bit. Cause like, I feel like I I want to start like actually doing stuff for my major. And like, right now I'm working a job that's kind of just, it's like a waitressing job. And I heard someone said they worked at a front desk before, like for, I think you said you worked at a front desk before for like your IT stuff mm -hmm. to begin with. It was like, how did you guys be able to find stuff like that? Like, I just feel like I'm kind of at a loss of like finding stuff, I guess. And I have connected with the career hub. They're helping me with like my resume and stuff like that. But like, how did you guys find like basic front desk jobs or like easy entry jobs before your internship, I guess? A good resource that I found is, is talking with your professors. Usually they have some sort of, I don't know what, what your major is, but uh, I know a lot of departments have like research assistant positions or, or something related uh, that you do under your professor. And that, that's what I started out as. Um, I did like uh, basic data entry for, for one of my professors and she over time started giving me harder tasks. Um, and so that they're, they're a very good resource. And I think, so Michelle and Montana, both of you, the jobs that you're in now started as internships. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So, right. So you start with the internship and sometimes that transitions into full-time work where they keep you on mm -hmm. still doing what maybe similar things to what you're doing in your internship, maybe more. Um, but at least it's, it's related. I think, um, one connection that that reminds me of is before I worked almost a full year at Walmart which is a really big shift from working at Walmart to going into a research position. And they asked me about it. And I was like, yeah, I have learned a lot of skills. I've had to deal with so many crazy people every single day. Um, and I have, I've learned patience. I've learned better communication skills. So no matter what you're doing, if you're switching into an entirely different field, you're going to have learned a bunch of skills and you can apply them. And I think everyone can appreciate that. And also summer internships. Mm -hmm. Did any of you guys do it out of state or did you guys all do it in Maine? Mm -hmm. I did mine in Virginia. Virginia. How did you like come across that? Because I'm looking to go out of state for like a summer internship because my major is media studies. So I'd like to go somewhere where it's more like, you know, jumping, I guess. <laughs> so um, like, what, how did you find that? Like out of state? So, uh, well, my, my professor I was taking uh, one, of, one of my courses with told us about uh, the Pathways program, which okay. is a, a program that the, the U.S. government does, which you apply for. And it uh, from that application, uh, different NASA centers will reach out to you, like your resume will be sent to uh, the departments that, that are interested. Um, and <clears throat> the department that was interested in me just happened to be... Uh, in, in Virginia, I wasn't, you know, I, I guess, particularly yeah. looking to move to a certain place. That's just the, the offer that I had received. Yeah. Being open, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. So it's Pathways? Pathways. Uh, okay. I think it's on usajobs.gov is the, the website. All right. Mm -hmm. Do you have one more question? Oh, yeah. Do we have time for one? Sure. Okay. Uh, my question is I navigate the world by asking questions. I love asking questions. That's the way that I understand the concept. 
Now, because of that reason, I often do ask a lot of questions. <laughs> and I feel like I can relate to you when you were saying that you may feel like you annoy your people. That is what I feel like. And when I start to feel that way, because I can range from very small basic questions to like overcomplicated questions that I do think very complicated. Um, and then I push myself away because I'm like, I feel like I don't belong here because I've asked all these questions. I don't know these questions and you're giving me like a standoff personality that I don't want to. So how do you work or how did you guys work with that trouble of like feeling anxious about asking questions? Especially in the lab, because that's I, I'm a chemistry major, so that's something that's always going to be there. I like to own up to it because I also get very anxious about asking questions and I'll usually have quite a few of them. And I found that it has gotten so much easier once I just really start owning up to and going up to them. And at the very beginning going, look, I'm going to bombard you with a bunch of questions right now. And it kind of lightens the tension because usually they'll be like, yep, I get it. You're, you're starting out, you're new. And then I can just start rattling off questions and especially in a small setting where you're going to start building a good like friendship or rapport with your coworkers, they're going to start expecting it from you. And you'll also honestly like get really good communication that way. Cause I've also had the trouble of asking questions and they don't quite understand what I'm asking, but, and it'll take a bit of time, but after like a month or so, you're going to start understanding each other so much better and it lowers that anxiety. But I also have struggled with that for sure, but it, it gets better. And then from the other side of that interaction too, mm -hmm. when you're talking to a recruiter or an interviewer or an HR person or your supervisor in the position, we want you to ask questions. We want you to be curious and to show interest and to want to find out more because it's also making sure that you have all the information so you can make good decisions for yourself and your future. So it shows a really good initiative and self-awareness and motivation to ask questions. So it's really, it's don't feel bad about it. Don't feel, I know it's impossible not to feel anxious about it, but it, it gives a really good impression of yourself and your goals when you do ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. My major questions are always why. Yeah, yeah. Those are the best ones to ask, especially the why. Why am I doing this? Why are you assigning me this task? Mm -hmm. Why does this relate to that? Those are the mm -hmm. those are good questions to ask. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of the times when I've had something explained to me by my boss, and at the end they'll go, "Does that make sense? Do you have any questions?" When I've said no, it makes sense. They've actually just stared at me and gone, "Did it though?" Because that's a lot of information. Um, and so they honestly don't even really believe it if you say you don't have questions. So they want those questions. They expect them, and it, it does help build a good communication bond with them. Well, thank you so much. I think we are out of time. Yes. Okay. So thank you to our panel. Very much. Thank Appreciate you. you being here. Thank you all for coming.